I hope you felt the heart pounding, butterflies in the stomach, head spinning experience of falling in love. It's really one of the best experiences that we have in this life. And sometimes it's so good that people hope that that happiness will last for a lifetime. But finding a love story that ends happily ever after these days seems harder than ever. And that's partly because societal beliefs give us the wrong instructions about how to find it. The first love stories we hear as children are fairy tales that tell us that love appears magically. In adolescence, we read romantic tragedies that tell us that love appears by fate. Now, these might sound like fanciful fictions of our youth, but researchers find that these beliefs that love is both delivered and ensured by fate continue well into adulthood. Now, that might sound unlikely, but I'm sure all of you can think of friends who are intelligent, grown adults who seem to lose all capacity for reason when it comes to their love lives. And so it can happen to the best of us. It leaves us with a conundrum. On the one hand, falling in love is one of the best experiences that we can have emotionally. On the other hand, it seems to compromise our ability to make well reasoned decisions. And we need to make good decisions. Because our romantic relationships are strongly related to our psychological well being, life satisfaction, and even our physical health. And so we need something more reliable than the mercurial whims of fate to find our happily ever after. I spent about two years thinking about how to approach this conundrum while writing a book called The Science of Happily Ever After. And I found that happily married couples do all kinds of things differently in their relationships that are helpful. But the most interesting thing to me. Was something they did before they ever said, I do. And that was they chose partners with a certain set of traits and characteristics that set them up for success. Now, think for a second about the traits of your ideal partner. You might want someone who has certain personality traits or physical characteristics. There's actually hundreds of things that you could wish for. And the good news I have for you is there's pretty good odds you can get your first three wishes fulfilled. So, you want to use those wishes wisely. <laughs> Now, science can help us in this regard because it can tell us the relative value of certain traits compared to others when it comes to long term satisfaction and stability from longitudinal studies. Now, things like kindness are obviously more valuable than things like physical attractiveness or wealth, right? That sounds like common sense. But when you watch what couples actually do when selecting a partner, They choose on looks and money as two of the first three wishes. Now, there's a really low return on investment, if you want to think about that way. <laughs> Now, what about these other three dots? I just, there's hundreds of personality traits. I chose three that are pretty powerful predictors. Kind partners are awesome. They're generous, they're empathic,、uh, they want to be supportive of you. Emotionally stable partners are not psychopaths,、uh, they're <laughs> less prone to anger. And、uh, they're just pleasant to be around. Sensation seekers, they need novelty. And they love to take risks to generate exciting experiences. And they're really fun to date for a while. And then it's really incompatible with the idea of being married to the same person for decades on end. So, what would happen if someone wished well and wished for these three traits instead of looks, money, or something else that doesn't predict well? Well, before we do that, let's take a look at what happens to the average couple over the course of the first 13 years of marriage.、Okay? And that's represented by the blue dot. The green dot are people who choose poorly. They actually make bad decisions about choosing a partner. And what you can see is this is that there are sharp declines. By thought experiment, if couples had a million dollars of relationship satisfaction in year one, average couples would lose half a million dollars by year 13. And poor choice couples would lose over $800,000 by year 13. Now, before we look at this last graph, let me tell you that we can't always have our hearts pounding. That's high blood pressure. Butterflies in the stomach is, comes with stress hormones that are toxic when they're chronically released. So you're going to come down a little bit, and that's okay, but you got to live your life too and have your faculties about you. So let's look at what happens when people actually wish well. And there's many other traits besides personality. That are strong predictors. But what you can see is that they weather the early challenges of marriage quite well, and they set themselves up for a long and happy marriage. I don't think people should just coldly choose their partners based on some algorithm. 
But I also think relationships can be complicated and hard. And so if science can help us a bit in this regard to find our happily ever after, I think it's well worth our while. Thank you. I hope you felt the heart-pounding, butterflies in the stomach, head-spinning experience of falling in love. It's really one of the best experiences that we have in this life, and sometimes it's so good that people hope that that happiness will last for a lifetime. But finding a love story that ends happily ever after these days seems harder than ever, and that's partly because societal beliefs give us the wrong instructions about how to find it. The first love stories we hear as children are fairy tales that tell us that love appears magically. In adolescence, we read romantic tragedies that tell us that love appears by fate. Now, these might sound like fanciful fictions of our youth, but researchers find that these beliefs that love is both delivered and ensured by fate continue well into adulthood. Now, that might sound unlikely, but I'm sure all of you can think of friends who are intelligent, grown adults, who seem to lose all capacity for reason when it comes to their love lives. And so it can happen to the best of us. It leaves us with a conundrum. On the one hand, falling in love is one of the best experiences that we can have emotionally. On the other hand, it seems to compromise our ability to make well-reasoned decisions. And we need to make good decisions, because our romantic relationships are strongly related to our psychological well-being, life satisfaction, and even our physical health. And so we need something more reliable than the mercurial whims of fate to find our happily ever after. I spent about two years thinking about how to approach this conundrum while writing a book called The Science of Happily Ever After. And I found that happily married couples do all kinds of things differently in their relationships that are helpful. But the most interesting thing to me 